I just want to acknowledge the water, country, um, acknowledge today that we're on Darak Mura, acknowledge that it's everything in the physical, spiritual, cultural landscape. And this is a really special place. When you think about it, there's very few of these lagoons like this in sandstone country. Water is really important because it's, it's, it's what nourishes the whole country. You know, without water, none of us would be here. It's part of us, it's part of the country, it's part of our DNA, and all people too, not just First Nations people. We've had a lot of impacts in this area. We've lost a lot of our cultural knowledge through this country. And so it's important to kind of reflect on what we have, what we hold on to. You know, so part of the journey and part of the conversation was how do we kind of support and work together with the council to keep making that better? How does the cultural understanding and the cultural elements actually improve this water body and the surrounding country? For the water, it's a lot of real special stories, you know, come from there and a lot of need to look after that water because every one of us has got a story that goes back thousands of years. But when we look at the lagoons like this, we've got them all over Australia and up our way as well. And when we see our lagoon country, it's a really special country. So when you look in here now, this little strip we're standing now, we don't want to burn this here. We leave this for the water, see? And as the water in, a, in this lagoon, just like a saucer, when we get those gentle slopes, what we've got then is the water seepage coming up and then it creates water vegetation that goes a certain distance. And the minute they put a road too close to the lagoon like this, then it cuts off that, that barrier. It impacts the road and it stops the water from seeping through. What you still have here is something very special, which is called sand. And sand is like our gold. And all our lagoons used to be sandy and it used to be all sand through all our river systems. They made sure that the sand was in the water and the way they did that was managing the country around it with the right type of fire management so that the land was always full of vegetation and there was always ground cover. And when we lose the sand, we lose our birds, we lose our mussels, we lose all our lilies, we lose everything from the water. We lose all the water quality, we can't drink the water. And also we start to lose our certain trees that depend on that sand. So the sand in our waterways is what we need to see back in our rivers again. And our majority of them are all filling up with mud. And that is a, all related to how we treat the land. So where you're standing, this is no fire country. And we keep it like that, you know, keep it nice. And it's cool. Every river in Australia should have a kilometre buffer of natural bushland. But at the moment, they land clear right to the river. They run their cattle into the water. They're just destroying it and killing it, destroying all our bird life, everything. Now you only see one bird flying over, look, see? But there should have been thousands of birds and every lagoon would have been the same. And even in, in our lifetimes, we probably see them decline rapidly. So whether it's a rainforest, lagoon, river, or any special country that don't belong to fire, the only way we manage the country that's fire sensitive is to manage all the country around it. See how it's all inclusive. And healthy landscapes is the key to our future economy. And if we haven't got a healthy landscape, then our innovation and our hopes and ideas, they're going to be limited. You know, now we're getting floods. That's Mother Nature saying, get out of our waterways. Move out because you're killing our water, you're killing our fish, you're killing everything. Build your houses over there and over there, but don't build it in a river. In the 90s, this was the worst water body in the Hawks European system. And so the council did a lot of work to try and get this place healthy again, but it's still not the best it could be. And the other ingredient that's missing is actually having that cultural perspective and that deep love for the place to actually get it healthy again. It's very much part of the community here. They're very aware they live around a lagoon. They love living around a lagoon. I'm hoping that we can be influencing how other people feel and that they, they get more of a sense of caring and responsibility for the place. Explaining one waterhole is really hard and how I explain it is when we're looking at a map, we see these from the mountain down. We see all these waterways that come out like little spider webs. And that's what's important to us, that whole system. So having that whole scope of people that live in the area, plus the Aboriginal community, councils and all those kind of forces, 
all coming together um, to keep the area nice and safe and clean. That would be a great start. <laughs> There's a wave of people starting to understand that yeah, we need to keep this country alive or we're not going to have a future. So I'm hoping we stand and, and get stronger in being um, that, that voice for country. Yeah. Thank you.